In this video, we'll go through an example of using the variational method to estimate the ground state energy of the hydrogen atom, which we already know the true ground state energy of, so we can compare and evaluate our estimate with the true result. This will also show how to, how to implement the tips and tricks that we presented in the last video in practice. So for this problem, we're going to choose a trial wave function that's e to the minus alpha r squared, where alpha is uh, the radius, so the radial distance of the electron from the nucleus. Alpha here is a parameter that we're going to vary to minimize the e tilde, which is a ra the ratio of the expectation value of the Hamiltonian with this wave function and a normalization constant. Because we're looking at the hydrogen atom, this is our Hamiltonian. So you have the kinetic energy term written out in terms uh, with the momentum operator having been substituted in, in the position basis and the Coulomb interaction between the electron and the uh, proton at the nucleus. So first, uh, why would this be a good trial wave function? One uh, good quality about this is that as we get further and further from the nucleus, so as R tends to infinity, our trial wave function tends to zero. And this is saying that it's more and more unlikely that the electron in the ground state is far away from the nucleus. Likewise, it's more likely, or conversely, it's more likely that the electron is close to the nucleus. And that's what we expect for the ground state uh, when the electron is in the ground state of the hydrogen atom. Uh, it also, doesn't present any nodes. So a node is uh, let's say values of R for which uh, our wave function goes to zero. So there, there isn't uh, any radius for which we expect uh, our trial wave function to go to zero. And that's also uh, expected for the ground state of one dimensional systems. And here we only have one variable R, so this is a one dimensional system. It is also rotationally invariant. And we know that the, uh, the ground state of hydrogen doesn't have any angular dependence. So, it, if you have the nucleus here, you have the same probability of finding the electron at some distance R here, as you do as finding the electron at some distance R over here. And because this wave function, trial wave function doesn't depend on any angular variables, uh, this also makes, it makes it a good candidate. Okay, so the first step in using the variational method is to calculate uh, this E tilde, which is the expectation value of the Hamiltonian with a normalization constant for our trial wave function. This is equal to an integral from zero to infinity Uh, this is the complex conjugate of our wave function. There is no uh, imaginary parameter, so it's just the same wave function. We have our Hamiltonian. And our uh, other wave function over here given by ket psi. And this d3 to the r just uh, stands for a three-dimensional volume element or a, 
a volume element right? in integration with respect to three different variables. And to this, we're going to divide by a normalization constant, which is the inner product of our trial wave function. This will be e to the minus two r squared. These integrals are most easily done in spherical coordinates. And we're going to ignore any terms in the Hamiltonian in particular that have angular dependencies because our wave function doesn't depend on any angles. So it's redundant to, to include them in our calculation. So we can rewrite this as follows. So the radial part of the Laplacian in spherical coordinates is one over r squared dr r squared operating on our trial wave function. minus the potential energy term over here. And we're integrating with respect to R and our volume element is typically R squared sine theta dr d phi d theta, but we're not taking into account the angular parts because they're going to get canceled out by the denominator anyways. You'll pick up a factor of four pi from the angular integrals. This is e to minus of r square, r square dr. Okay, so this is uh, the integrals that we have to solve. I won't go through actually solving them. That's that's not the focus of the of the example. Uh, I'll just give the final answer which goes as follows. So one term you get three h bar squared over two m times this variational parameter alpha. And from the potential energy term, you get a quantity that has a square root of alpha and some numerical constants. So now that we have an expression for e tilde as a function of this variational parameter, we wanna minimize it with respect to uh, alpha. What that means is taking the partial derivative of our estimate with respect to alpha, setting that to zero and solving for the value of alpha. So this, when you take the partial derivative of this, uh, the derivative of alpha is just one. So you get three h bar square over two m. The derivative of square root of alpha is one half over one over root alpha. So the two over here gets canceled out with the one half you pick up from the derivative. and you're left with one over root alpha. This has to equal to zero for this to be a minimum. So we, we can isolate for alpha and that gives us an optimal value of alpha, which we're denoting by alpha bar of e m e squared four pi epsilon h bar all squared eight over nine pi. Okay, so we have the value for alpha that will minimize this. So now we plug it back in there in our expression for the energy.
And this is the same thing as E of alpha with alpha evaluated at this optimal quantity. And this gives us this quantity. This over here, we can recognize as the true ground state energy of hydrogen. This is the exact ground state energy of hydrogen, which we said was minus 13.6 electron volts. This is in contrast to our estimated one, which is minus 11.54 electron volts. So we've gotten fairly close. This energy is still higher than the true ground state energy. Uh, in this case, because it's less negative than this one. So this number is larger than this, but it's fairly good given our initial guess for the wave function. If you wanna try this out for yourself, you can try a trial wave function that looks like this, e to the minus alpha r, where alpha is again a variational parameter. Uh, this we know is the true wave function of the hydrogen atom. So you should recover the exact energy. Uh, so you can try it out, use the variational method with this trial wave function and confirm that you get the expected result of minus 13.6 electron volts. I'll also mention quickly that uh, you can also generalize the variational method to estimate excited state energies. One easy way of doing it is, uh, so for excited state energies, uh, you can choose a trial wave function, which we can call uh, phi two of R, let's say in this case. that is orthogonal to the uh, our trial wave function for the ground state. And what that means is if you take the inner product between phi two and uh, phi, this should be equal to zero. If you can find the wave function, a second wave function that's orthogonal to the one you use for the ground state energy estimation, uh, you can usually get a good estimate of the uh, first excited state energy of, of the system. So this is typically how you use this variational method. Uh, usually you have more than one variational parameter and you optimize each one of them to minimize the energy and get as close as possible to the true ground state energy of, of the system. <laughs>